All right, I got the machine leaning against the wall here. I'm just uh, trying to show you what the underside of this Maytag washer looks like. Now, let's very quickly see each and every part down here. It may look very intimidating, but a closer look reveals that there aren't really many parts to it. Very simple. This is what's called the drive motor, okay? Using this drive belt, it is tied to this drive shaft. This, this is the part that goes all the way into the machine and uh, connects to both the impeller and then the basket, okay? So when this motor turns, it turns the basket or it turns the impeller, depending upon what state it is in. So this part is the actuator and it's got a handle here and that handle is tied to this mechanism here. And this mechanism here is a gear shifting mechanism. So why do we even do gear shifting here? Well, this part is designed in such a way that using one single motor, we can put the washing machine in two modes, all right? The first one is spinning, and the second one is agitation, all right? When the machine spins, the entire basket spins. When it does agitation, it's only the impeller part, the central part that turns clockwise and counterclockwise. And how is that possible? So at one time, you put it in agitation. At another time, you put it in spinning. And it is made possible by this part right there, okay? Uh, what happens here is this is a motor on the actuator, okay? This motor part is tied to a handle. The handle is connected to this mechanism, which connects to the gear shifting mechanism. So when the motor is energized, at one time it shifts one way, at another time it shifts back. In so doing, when it's in one position, it's in agitation. When it's in a different position, it's in spinning. So this motion right here is gear shifting, okay? In one position, it aligns this entire gear shifting mechanism to engage one set of gears. In the second position, it aligns or it engages a different set of gears, thereby making it possible to switch between spinning of the basket or the agitation of the impeller, okay? Now, as part of the actuator, you have not only the motor, but also the speed sensing mechanism. This clear plastic thing right there, that is the part that senses the speed. It has a prong-like part that protrudes deep into this casing, whereby it measures how fast or how slow the basket is moving, okay? All right, next to that, you have this black part right here. It's a capacitor, it's a drive capacitor motors in general when they are about to start spinning when it's about to start spinning it requires a lot of energy why because not only is it supposed to overcome its own weight but it is supposed to overcome the weight to which it is attached okay i mean i'm doing it using my fingers and i can feel how much energy is required it's a lot of energy because this entire thing is tied to the basket okay so driving this means driving the entire basket so this thing the motor does not have enough energy when it tries to turn the whole thing the first time so engineers over time they came up with a device called capacitor which stores energy and the energy comes to the help of a device like the motor when it is just starting to turn okay it's like the battery in your car all right and then of course um is a drain pump it's right there on this machine i uh, don't think we have any problems with drainage but uh in case you wondered that is a drain pump all right all right what the hell is this you might ask this is the actuator okay i bought this off of amazon by the way i must admit at this point that the culprit for the breakdown of my washing machine was the actuator okay i will leave that detail for later on but for right now let's just go ahead and talk about the actuator all right now so i did install this on the machine and it actually worked but i decided against using this particular actuator all right i will tell you the reasons later but for right now let's just go ahead and talk about the actuator okay this thing sticks out this is actually the motor it has an arm attached to it uh, here's 
the arm with that little thing right there that hooks into the gear shifting mechanism on the machine so every time you energize this motor it shifts okay the arm shifts and every time you de-energize it it shifts back to which is uh, default position right so what happens every time it moves is it changes the machine from uh, spinning mode into agitation mode and vice versa all right if you flip it upside down there is this part right here and there is a slot in it there is a board that is enclosed in a clear plastic this is the part that actually measures how fast the basket is turning all right so the way it works when you apply power to this machine to this thing right here there is a part that's mounted on the board all right let's say it's on this side so what it does is with under normal circumstances it emits light okay an uh, infrared light that breaches the gap and is captured by another part on this side all right so under normal times there is a continuous light beaming from this end to the other end so the processor in the machine detects any interruption in that beam of light okay so what happens is as the basket moves or turns the basket has a part that passes through this slot and the parts that passes through this slot has cutouts okay so because it has cut out, sometimes it interrupts the light, sometimes it doesn't, all right? And something like this, all right? A star that cuts through the slot, all right? So as it passes, it interrupts the beam of light, and sometimes it doesn't. And from that information, the processor on the machine can actually calculate how fast the basket is turning, all right? So that is the speed measuring unit on the actuator, all right? And then you have this part right here, and that is where the cables connect, all right? There you have it. This is the actuator. The plan today is to make sense of the two error codes we captured the last time we did our troubleshooting on my machine, okay? I don't know if you recall, the two error codes that I pulled from my machine were F7E1 and F7E7, okay? But for that, you need the user's manual, okay? So I was trying to get my version of the service manual online, but I failed miserably. The closest I can go as far as uh, getting a user user's manual for free was this part number that you're looking at which is quite different from the part number of the service manual that I got off of my machine okay obviously it's not the same as this one but what I figured is this is like a more up-to-date version of the Maytag series of washing machine okay mine as I told you before is about seven years old so I don't know when Maytag released this particular user's manual but what I figured is it has more information than my service manual so it includes all the information on my service manual and then it has some more okay which means that i can actually go ahead and use this for the purpose of this discussion okay mm -hmm. 